Welcome back to another video and today we're going to be working on the front wheel house. So first what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flack a disc all of this off. It looks like we might have to repair that from the other side. But I might be able to get it from this side and then put this outer skin on. But we'll flap a disc it off and see what we're dealing with. So we've got big problems here. I've chopped this bit out, back to fresh metal. Chopped the rest of it out to fresh metal apart from here and here. And I've left that little snag ending so that it can keep our shape. So that's a raised bit there. So I've cut around the raised bit. I'll we'll put a fresh piece of steel in there. But the thing is, there's a box section inside the chassis leg, which is this second skin, which is the middle skin. And if we look in here, there is a big, big hole. So from this side, I can't actually do anything with any of that in there. So the only thing I can do is plate it up and when we pull the engine, fix it from the other side so we've got fresh material to weld on to. But looking at it, worst case scenario, I might have to chop the leg out and put a new box section of a leg in. See if I can find a donor card and chop a leg off it. Because this subframe mount is obviously what the reinforced skin is for. And that box section in there is supposed to come all the way to here and it just doesn't. I'm not too concerned about that but it's the swelling in between the skins and I'm not going to be able to fix that from here without pulling anything off. So I think my best bet is to just do the task at hand. I think I'm going to struggle a bit getting the angle back down onto the pinch weld because on this section it's flush, on here it kicks out and then it swoops in. So that's going to be a little bit of a struggle. This whole headache could have been solved when it came out of the factory. You could have sealed that seam and they could have done away with that. That's exactly what's caused this, I can guarantee you. I've moved a little bit more material, I've moved the double skin along this seam. All the way up until here, that needs to come off as well. I've chopped this open a little bit more. So this box section I've chopped out and I'm gonna weld that to the inside chassis leg. So at least it's got something because at the minute it's still quite flimsy. So if I weld that to the inside piece of chassis leg, that should put some rigidity back in it. And then I've done this so where the pinch weld is now flush that will then carry on up until about here and I don't have to worry about tucking the pinch weld back under. So we're not expecting to have this big hole here. Remove that rusty material, we're keeping this bit, I've chopped it out and I've folded it back. This box section I've welded to either skin on the chassis leg so it's welded on the inside and the outside and it's absolutely rock solid. So right now, we've pinned it in there and all up under there. I think we might get away with saving this actually. Just do a little repair on the inside on the engine bay. And I'm going to leave that for now because I won't be able to do much with it from this side anyway. Right now I'm going to prep up to about here. We're going to rust remedy everything. And then once that's dried, we'll wire brush it so the rust remedy is still in all the nooks and crannies. And then we'll have a fresh surface to red oxide and then I'll go ahead and seal it all with primer. 
so I'm going to make sure that I get the brush in all the places that you can't see. The brush is a lot longer than my fingers, so it's going to go everywhere you want it to. Shove it down in that cavity. Right now I'm doing the second stage, just red oxide. And you want to apply this very liberal. Make sure you force it into all the gaps. See, look, that's had a quick brush over. But if you force it in, it'll soon fill all of them. So we want to do all of this for everything I can get with the brush. And it's going on nice and thick. Sorry to interrupt the video, but all work has stopped on the Fiesta. It's been about 10 months now since I've actually even been in it. Now, for those of you who don't know, we've got a Marvel and Escort and that used to live in the back garden. So the Fiesta was on the drive and my dad's Marvel and Escort was in the garden. So I've upgraded to a 3 metre by 4.5 metre gazebo. Just got one side on there, just to check it. Won't be leaving the sides on because we've got about 12 degree weather today. I've got a light I'll be able to work out here up until all hours. Two flexible heads. I've not even looked under the bonnet. Everything I've done last time has gone rusty. That side's still looking alright. And this is where it left off. It's going to come in very handy, this light. And even everything I've primed, because prime is porous. It's starting to go rusty. But all the bare metal, the bare metal's gone rusty. That's still nice and fresh and glossy. So today marks the return of working on the Fiesta. So I'm going to get it stripped down and I'm going to continue the video. So I've got the strut out. I've left that little bit of the subframe in to tie it in. And I have come up with a plan. I'm going to cut that bit out first, all the way up until here, replace that bit, do the same for here, and I think I might need to remove a little bit more of the chassis to repair the box section in there. So if I do end up doing that, I want to get this straight, I want to get this reinforced, and then I'll put the middle layer inside the chassis leg and I might be able to do that all the way up until about here and then it's just this bit so when I chop that this bit will be nice and strong just before I start work on it again I'm gonna have to blow the cobwebs off the welder looks like we've got a mouse problem as well so I'm all set up got me welder my grinder everything to hand I've gone ahead and replaced this little bit, but I've now got fresh material there. I managed to fill that hole just by welding it. And I've got my next plate made up here, so this is going to be our middle layer. I'm going to clamp that in there. Spot weld the holes. And I'm going to seam weld it all there. And of course I am red oxide and as we're going, because we've got fresh metal there. So we want to get that sealed. I'm going to go ahead and fill the first plug weld first, right in the very corner. I'm 
gonna go ahead and do the same on top in the opposite place. With the top tack, I can now go ahead, bend that rest of the sheet metal over. And now we can continue that weld all the way up until it's out of reach inside the leg. So with that pinned in there and there, go ahead, put another clamp on. I'm going to weld the top so it heats it up and I want it to take this shape as natural as possible. So we've got the heat going through it when I see him weld the top. So we're going to swap the clamps around now. We're going to leave that one off and we're going to come back to here. I think I'm going to get that one. That didn't move too much. Go ahead, get this one done now. Got our middle layer. Fully welded in. Seamed it all the way up there. The plug welds have come out perfect. There's virtually no gap in between the two skins. Rock solid. And I've just discovered that that piece of metal there isn't actually the chassis leg. The chassis leg's gone. That's our subframe. So you can see what's remaining of it there, but there's no actual chassis leg up until that piece here where it starts going down. So I'm going to get the same method done here, get that nice and snug because that's quite flimsy at the minute. And I am going to have to chop that out. I wouldn't mind as well. I should have chopped the leg off the other Mark 3 Fiesta I had, but I never knew it was this bad. So I'm going to get this sorted, get some strength back in there. I'm happy that I've done that because I can now chop this out with no consequences. I really didn't want to do it, but I'm happy I have. That's one of the took out. I'll weld that back in. And I'm just going to leave this middle skin in. But there's nothing left of it. So I'm going to start chopping. That there isn't chassis leg. That bit might have been. This bit isn't. So that's all got to come out.
And here we have it. We have what's left of the chassis leg there. That bit there, that's the subframe mount. And that's the rotted bit of chassis leg there. So what I'm gonna have to do is, might get away with saving them. Put a new fresh piece in, all the way up to there. So I'll do that in one piece, and then I'll do this in another. There we have it. Got our plate made and ready to go in. We had two spot welds that were actually holding it. These two had rusted away, so we'll replicate them. Let's not forget our most important part. Go ahead and prep the materials. And this can go on right now while it's wet. It doesn't matter if it gets a little bit scorched. So, in the middle of welding that, it's just gone seven o'clock. Now setting off for the night shift. Got my light out. I've got a side put on over there. I think I'll go ahead and get this side on as well. That's the piece that will be going in there. I've cut out for our square for the under tray. And I'll go ahead and drill a hole there for the plug weld. Just getting ready now to put the middle section in. This has been red oxided, etch primed, and top coated. And this bit I've done with rust remedy. There's a little bit of overspray on there, but the welder will get through that. Here's our replacement panel. I'll do the same again to that. Top coat that as well on the inside. And after all that, that line still lines up. That's a good weld for a flux core welder. Just prepping our surfaces now before I weld it back together. These runs of red oxide and then obviously I've painted over them. I had a little bit of rust there, wire wheeled it, rust memory it and painted it. Here's the part that's going back on. It is a little bit pitted, but a little bit of rust remedy on there. I'm gonna seal it with red oxide. Should be fine. And down there, I've got as much paint as I can down there. Sprayed it on so it ran down. Just a quick little shot before I seal it up. Never to be seen again. There we have it, the inside is 100% repaired, outer skin going back on. Once we've got this piece and that piece welded back in, we can then go ahead and start boxing it back up. We're back to where we originally started, but now the inside is fully repaired. So there's not much I can do at the minute now. The paint's still wet. I can't cut any of the plates for here. I need to touch all of this and it's going to get everywhere. And it's going to defeat the object of doing it. I mean, I've touched it a little bit there, but I'm not too concerned about that. So what I'm going to do now is all of these holes 
I know that it's not going to be factory, and I know some people would want to keep them there for the concourseness of the car, but for practicality reasons, I'm going to go ahead and fill all of these. Not need to go in there. I'm not going to need to oil in there because I'll have an access hole inside the car for the same chamber. So I'll go ahead and I'll fill all of these. And I'll flap them off as well, but I won't show you any of that. I'll weld them as well. So we've got them two, this one, and them three. And I think that'll do it for tonight. I'll give it overnight for that to go hard. So I had a little bit of a late start today. So I've just cracked on. I've inserted a piece of steel, which tucks off all the way up until there. And I've got a tack on it there. Spot welded it the whole length, all the way up until here. Welded it there and there. And there. This piece of steel measures out at 30 mil deep. And the tape, the tape line is 20 mil deep. So that pinch weld is 20 mil, which is that tape line. So I've just gone ahead and added our first piece of additional steel, which is this piece. So now, what I've got to do with this piece, because it's at the right height now, all I'm going to do is fill that gap in with weld. And then try and get the desired effect there and replicate it here. And this piece of tape, well, it's been on fire now. That's where the step down finishes and then it goes flush the rest of the way. So this piece of steel is our desired thickness. We've just got to join that to this bit now. And all I'm doing is I'm taking measurements off the other side and then bringing them over to this side. Just on the same method with this piece. That's nice and sturdy. I'll cut that level with the tape and then we'll do this piece. Just a quick little update. I've rust remedied all this because we had a few days of bad weather, so we're now out here. Just put a patch in there today. And this bit, this is the third time I've done this bit. First, I've done this method, didn't like it, it weren't working. Next, I measured 16 centimetres, which brought us to where that weld ends. And that's where it's nice and flush, and then it comes out. So I welded this bit in up to 16 centimetres. And then I tried to put a new piece in, weld from there to there, and I didn't like that either. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it perfect, but it's near enough. And hopefully with a coat of paint and a little bit of filler, it should be fine. So the method that I'm doing at the minute, it seems to be going quite well. So I've cut, cut it all out, cut this bit out as well, so this bit finishes there. Instead of having a 30 mil, we've only got that 20 mil there now, and I've welded that to that. So this is welded all the way down, up to 16 centimetres, where we start to get our angle back. So, I've got our screw in there, and that, that's a good weld back. It's because there's thick metal behind it. I've got our screw in, and what I'm doing is, just going in and out, just to try and get the memory of the metal going. If I go any further, I'll put a kink in it. So we want to come back out with that. And I'll do it again. Now that's sitting without any force on it, near enough bang on where I want it. So I think I'm going to cut that bit out and I'm going to weld it up to here. And then I can put a sliver of metal in and that should follow the angle round. So I've probably got about two or three more tacks there. I would need to finish welding it flush. So I'll go ahead and do them now. That's now up to where our flush section finishes. So the depth of this pinch weld is 5mm. 
And this is the same method I've done for all of this. So, stuff me and reel it in. Stanley blade. And then you can see if it's on 5mm. We want to be measuring it where it goes back to the normal depth. So we'll stick that in there. Too much. Still too much. By the time I've folded that round the bend, that should be on 5mm. So I'm going to leave that screwdriver there. And now I'm going to weld up inside here. So what I've done there is I've welded a bead to the pinch weld and now I'm going to weld our plate to our bead. The weld is going to be up behind that plate so when I do remove the material to get the angle of it there's still a thick layer of weld up tucked inside. I'm not going to be removing the majority of it. The majority of it's going to be tucked away. So let's weld the weld to the plate. I need new copper welding tips as well, that's why it's jittering like that. Getting full of slag. I've just knocked all the weld off. And it's come out better than I ever could have asked for. It's absolutely bang on. A little bit of filler and it will smooth everything out. The only thing is the weld doesn't tuck in some places. I think it's going to be when I was tacking it because it was only cold when I was tacking it. Once you get a bit of heat in it, it does weld better. And I know it did tack them corners and that's the majority of places where the weld doesn't tuck. So I need to fix some of these and then it'll be ready for a the skim then. But I thought I'd just show you after my first weld, and I've just knocked it off with a flapper disc, how well it's actually turned out. That, I didn't think I was going to get that, and I've managed to get it. Got that swooping angle up to our 20 mil. And here, I've just flapper disc that as well. And that's come out very nice. We'll get it more uniform with filler. The likes of there, and there, and that bit there, that's going to need filler. But the majority of it has come out perfect with just a welder and a grinder. And this bit, I struggled like hell with that, done it three times. But it's absolutely spot on. And I said ten months ago when I first started it, it's going to look like a patchwork cloth. And here we have it, we've got... One panel there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go ahead, call this eight, and nine, the one that we took out. So it's took nine pieces of steel to get it back to the way it should be. 
And if you look where I've flapped a disc to weld off, it's nice and flush either side. So there's no high spots, there's no low spots. Everything is true. And if you look at the sheen there, that piece of metal has gone back exactly where it was. We've got our raised bit there, we need to cut a square in there for the mouth of the inner wheel arch. This is absolutely perfect, all the way up. And this, I made up with that bit. I didn't think I'd be able to get it. And it's come out spot on. It's gone from the original five mil, and then I've swooped it into nothing, and then I've brought it back out, and it's five mil at this point. All down here is gradually coming up to five mil. So I'm gonna sort some of the holes out, flap it off, and I'll come back to you when I'm filling and priming. I didn't film any of this process because this filler, it's supposed to be easy sand, but I think I've had it that long. All the resins have evaporated, so it's gone hard in the tin. And I've gone through, I don't know how many pieces of paper, and this is all 80 grit, and it didn't have to take some time. So, there is very minimal amount of filler on here. That is all done, that's ready for priming. This is all done. Got to get that bit there a little bit better, and fill that pin all in. But all this is spot on, it's not took much at all. And here, there's no filler gone on there whatsoever, that was bang on. Apart from the spotting on the welding. So all I'm doing now, is I've got the filler on, and I'm just sanding that angle until it's right. And that's come out perfect. So I'll sand the filler down until it starts touching the welds. And then that should have the angle bang on for the pinch weld then. So I've just got my first guide coat on. I just wanted to get it all primed and see how it came out. This bit, that's come out very nice. That's all finished. The filler here isn't perfect. I'm going to have to give that another go. But that has to be the worst excuse of wet and dry paper. I've ever seen. Don't even know where I got it from. Probably Alfred's. But I'm just going over everything. 180 grit in the whole lot. And then when this is near enough finished, I'll prime it and do up top. Once it's primed, no slag, no splatter is going to stick to the bare metal. So, it's been about four days since the last clip. And that four days has been non stop sanding, painting, filling, sanding again. And this is how it looks. And each time I've done that process, it doesn't look any different. And it's just feeling that little bit more better. But now it's at the stage where it's ready for a full coat of primer. So, I've filled them holes in up there. And that one and that one. And I've sealed that seam. That is all nice and flush. And all there. Uh, Seams of metal. With a coat of paint on it, it'll look like it should be there though. So, I red oxided the whole thing and knocked it back. And that was two days ago. And as we can see, the red oxide, even though it's dry to the touch, it's still not cured. And it's not laid right on the paint. So before I primed it, it was nice and flush. But now I've primed it on top of the red oxide, it's all standing out. But I'm going to prime it anyway, and then when I come to final finish, the paint will be well cured, and I'll be able to knock it back, and I'll be able to paint it without any issues. So this is all nice down here. Our patches, which we done from the other side, you can't feel any of them anymore. All here, that's all good. And the filler, sanded the filler down, red oxided it, filled in the gaps, primed it. So you can actually see the weld there, 
but that's because the primer is laid on top of the red oxide. You couldn't see it before. And you can't feel it, but you can see it. So it's coming up to about half seven at night. 100% too late to be painting because moisture is going to settle on it. But I've come too far now. I want to get it primed. Like, like so that there, we've got a little bit of moisture coming out. So I'll sand that down and dry it with the blow lamp. And I've just done that for everything in here. So I'll repeat that process here. So I want to get all of this primed. All of that primed in there. And while it's drying, I'll put my wing on and do the holes. And I'll worry about all of this when I come to final prep. As long as it's sealed for now. Our spray job has had overnight to set and it looks all right now it's dry you can't see any of them welds and it's still nice and flush and i did try to give it a coat of high build primer but the lid on the can had gone crusty but the majority of things now it's got a coat of paint on it still needs final prep keep that in mind and i'm just Lining the wing up. This one lines up in places that the other one doesn't. And vice versa. But that's just the press of the wing. So it's absolutely spot on there. But here, the wing's sitting in a bit. And here, the wing's sitting out a bit. And I've tried to get it right, but I can't. I've got it as good as you can get it. Which is all you can ask for. So I've got 10mm bolts, M6 threads. So I'm going to drill these, get them in. I can get them two in on the A pillar. And I'm in two minds about whether to do these today or not. One, because the bonnet's been off a few times and it's not sitting through at the minute. So I'm going to have to have a good mess about with it. And this wing's not the best wing. There's a little dent in it there. And there's a dent in it there, and that needs hitting back over. So I think if I just get the basics done on the wing, and it's actually bolted on at the end of the day, I think that'll do us. Can't get the bottom bolted up, because the new sill hasn't gone on yet. And the likes of that, I've got to knock that over, because that's not allowing the wing to come up as far as it should do. That's as high as the wing is coming up now. And the lines still aren't correct. So I've got to do a little bit of messing about with the ring. The shut line's alright. But I can't do that until the sill's off. So I'm going to skip along now. And hopefully the wing should all be bolted on. There we have it. It's getting on a bit. It's coming up to 11 o'clock. I've not been filming much because we've had a few days of slow work. So I just wanted to crack on and actually see some progress. So this is all bolted up. That's as good as I'm going to get it. I've got the two bolts in there. And I am seriously thinking about just trying my luck with a new wing. It's got a ding in it there. It's got a ding in it there. But at least it'll do for now. It will keep the weather off it. And I'm glad I haven't done these two bolts. Because the bonnet is way out. The wing should be sitting on that line near enough. And when it is, the bonnet doesn't shut. So I'm glad I've left that. That's the end of this chapter. The work in the near side, front wheel house, is all finished and ready for final prep. So I'm going to let it down, get it on all fours. And hopefully none of me welds pop.
So that's the end of a long awaited video on the Fiesta. Got it all spun round. I've got the jack under there. I'm going to start on the back. But first, I'm going to get it running. So that's in the next video. So if you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. Make sure to comment. And don't forget to subscribe so I can catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Just thought I'd show you the materials that we've gone through. We've used a shared load of paper. We've used a kilogram of welding wire just on that one corner. This is my bin buffy. That's all the paper. And here's the other materials. So we've got a little bit of sheet metal in there, it's no good for nothing. Stuff off the car. And when I've been brushing up each night, this is all the sparks I've collected. It's all sparks in there.